One of the most common categories of scaremongering videos on social media is what I call the let's point to a label and say, oh my God, unrecognizable chemical, therefore cancer template. There are thousands of them and quite a lot of them end up getting a lot of views and likes as well. Not because they are true, but because people seem to believe that companies are out to poison you with preservatives and additives. So let's look at the science of why we use additives. There are 12 categories of additives, but in this video, we will look at two of them, preservatives and antioxidants. We will look at other categories like coloring agents, emulsifiers, stabilizers, anti-caking agents, and flavor enhancers in a subsequent video. Let's start with a very simple fact. Given enough time, food spoils. And how much time depends on where you live. In India, room temperature, fresh food spoils in a very short amount of time. Spoilage is microbes deciding to say, hey, free food. And to prevent other microbes from coming to the party, some of them will produce toxins. And if you eat that food, it's not good for you. So historically, we use methods like adding salt or acid, which kills microbes, or lots of sugar, which makes water less available to microbes or dehydration, which just removes water because, you know, life needs water to live, to preserve food. So long-lasting food in the past was usually in the form of salty, sour, sweet, or dehydrated things like pickles, sausages, dried fish, or jams. As the industrial revolution came around, the world became more urbanized and we discovered the technology to make fertilizers. So population exploded. The vast majority of people in the world today do not live close to where food is grown. So to feed the world, we need a spectrum of engineering techniques to increase the shelf life of food. And preservatives and antioxidants are two of the most important ones. Two of the most common ways in which food spoils is microbes like bacteria and fungi and oxidation, where oxygen reacts with things in your food. Preservatives keep microbes away and antioxidants slow down oxidation. The food industry has tested and standardized these and named them with a letter plus number like E300. Many scaremongers on social media will tell you that companies are fooling you by hiding the actual name of the chemical used but the very reason this code is used is so that regardless of language and script, you know exactly what is in your food. Imagine going to Thailand and finding a label written entirely in Thai. And even those labels now have these numbers, so it's easy for you to look it up. There are two classes of preservatives, class one and class two. Class one are natural substances like salt, sugar, spices, vinegar, citric acid, etc. Class 2 are artificial or nature-identical substances produced synthetically. Antimicrobial preservatives like sulfur compounds such as sulfites, that's E220 to 228, are used to inhibit the growth of bacteria. Sorbic acid, E200, is used in the preservation of potato products like chips, cheese, and jams. Benzoic acid and its calcium, sodium, or potassium salts, which is E210 to 213, are used as antibacterials and antifungals. Antioxidant preservatives are often used in minimally processed vegetable products like ready-to-eat salads, freshly cut fruit, and fresh juices, where browning is a significant concern. Ascorbic acid, E300, and citric acid, E330, can be used to prevent browning because they stop a certain enzyme that, in the presence of oxygen, creates brown pigments. And oh, ascorbic acid is known as vitamin C. And citric acid is quite literally what you squeeze out of a lemon or lime. Regardless of what scaremongers will tell you, preservatives are generally recognized as safe. They've been used since the start of the 20th century and there is no evidence that they cause any kind of harm at scale. That said, a very small number of people can be allergic to sulfites and benzoates. But let's keep this in mind. More people are allergic to peanuts than to sulfites or benzoates. And those are used in exceedingly small quantities. The dosage matters. A particular subcategory of scaremongering is, oh, the European Union has banned this, but India is allowing, so you should be aware. This is particularly convincing because the European Union is rich and tends to do a lot of research. And if they've banned something, surely it must be bad. Turns out that is not the case. There are two approaches to food safety, a danger-based approach 
and a risk-based approach. The EU and even Japan tends to use a danger-based approach, meaning if an additive has the remotest potential to be dangerous at some ridiculously high levels of consumption in rats, they will still ban it. And they are rich enough to ban it, meaning that people can afford to pay extra for foods that will spoil sooner. Europeans waste a lot of food. Countries like India cannot afford to do that. We cannot afford to let food spoil. We therefore take, similar to the US, a risk-based approach where we ask one further question. Is the average consumer likely to consume enough on a daily basis for that danger to actually happen? These are two different ways to see the world. And somehow for influencers to say that European food experts are better than Indian or American food experts is, is silly and arrogant. There is no right or wrong here. All I'm saying is that you can't sit in India and then apply European standards and rules about what is safe and what is not. It's better to trust local experts. To be fair, this is also a function of India's income inequality. Rich urban people like us can now afford to say things like, I want fresh food without preservatives. And yes, it's good to be aware of what is in your food, but let's not behave like our rich and expensive choices are somehow superior. It's really very simple. If you are eating a packet of biscuits, it's likely to have a few milligrams of preservatives. You might want to pay more attention to the fact that you're eating a packet of biscuits with all the fats and sugar than a few milligrams of preservatives. If you can afford to eat preservative-free biscuits, go for it. If your overall diet is balanced and nutritious and you eat lots of fresh food, then eating the occasional snack or processed food with preservatives is absolutely fine.